Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be looking at making this contraption. Years ago my next door neighbour actually had one of these on a post in his back garden and I spent many a time looking up at it as a boy and thinking that it was a great thing. And uh, that memory I suppose just randomly floated into my mind the other day and I thought it would make a nice tutorial for Cinema 4D so that's where I got the idea from. Anyway, without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. Right, so we've got a new window set up and I'm going to build this one from scratch as I did with the previous tutorial, uh, which was of course my Geneva movement tutorial if you haven't seen that one. So we'll grab a cylinder and we'll make it 200 in the radius, 10 in the height, give it a single height segment and 60 rotation segments and it can stay orientated in the Y positive axis there, the plus Y. Great, and I've got the display in garage shading lines so that we can see what we're doing and it gives us an idea of what's going on. The next stage is to get another cylinder. I'll just put this beneath the first one. I'm going to rename this top cylinder actually base and call this one, I'm just going to call it support. It's like a strut that holds the, uh, the, wet, the actual vein we've got the support there what i'm going to do here then is well, for a start i'm going to orientate it differently we're going to put it in plus x i'm going to give it a radius of five a height i'm going to leave at 200 height segments one and again 60 rotation segments just to make it nice and round and then i'm going to pull it to just just about there that will be fine where that is just that it's just bisecting the original cylinder there, the base cylinder. What I'll do also in the display, I'm going to change to isopalms just to make that a little bit cleaner. Moving on from here, I'm just going to drop that into the base so that they're parent-child. Get a cube and my cube I can leave at 200 by 200 and just change the Z to 2 and that's great. Bring this over here so that it's almost in the correct place. And in the X, I'm just going to give it two segments. I'm going to go into point mode and make this editable. So I'm just going to press C and now we've got it editable. Grab a hold of the two endpoints here and just move them downwards to wherever you choose to. It doesn't really matter. If you wish to, you can move these as well, but I'll just leave it like that. That's absolutely fine. And I'm just going to call this vein. So we'll put that under the support there so that they're all effectively one object now under the base. Go back into object mode and I can move this into position. It wants to be just on, the, I'm going to put that line just level with the edge of there. And that completes the first little part of this build. So what we'll do next is just select the base and I'll put a hold command on my Mac, command, uh, sorry, Alt-G I should say, and then group those together and rename this weather vane. Great, so that's where we are at the moment. We've just got to carry on and build the, the little man now. So what I did for him if I just go into an orthogonal view, all I did, I got a rectangle and I made it 100 in the width, or rather, one, yes, 100 in the width, and no, rather, it wasn't 100 in the width, was it? It was 20 in the width, that's better, and 100 in the height. If I just go zoom in on my object, I did add rounding and that's perfect the way it is, absolutely spot on. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a circle, group it into the rectangle there and just zero it out. It needs to be in a different plane, so let's put it in the 
x y oh no i beg your pardon it doesn't it just needs to be smaller of course it needs to be four that's better now all we need to do is move it up we can eyeball this it's fine and then it's a case of just holding down command and dragging out another copy and dropping it around there let's just double check make sure i've got that one just on the edge where the rounding starts all we need to do now is just take those there and we can select them all and we can say spline conversion connect and delete and that just creates a single object which is called circle and then moving on from this all we've got to do is drop that into an extrude take it down to a sensible sort of level which is going to be about we'll try five shall we yeah five i think is pretty good yeah five looks pretty good to me so that's the first arm now we've, all we've got to do is copy this again i'm just going to hold down the command key and drag another one of these out we've got our arms and we may as well rename them so left arm and right arm we can leave them as they are we don't need to move anything with regard to the axes that the axis positions are absolutely fine for these we're going to be doing a little bit of work with ik to make this work so we don't need to worry about their axis positions what i will do is just move them up a bit because we've obviously got to think about making legs and a body speaking of which let's make the legs and for those again i just need a rectangle this time i'm going to make it 20 by 90 in the height there uh, i'm going to bring it up to 55 just go and orient i'm going to orientate it in the z zy should be fine yeah that's good it's the same as the arms go into my end view now we're five millimeters above the base which is exactly where i want it to be and i'm going to move it along the z just for while we're working on it just by 50 make it editable go into point mode and i can select these two points along the top here if i just go to the selection grab those two and then i'm going to hold down my control key on my mac click and grab the subdivide just click that once and we've got a point now in the middle and then holding down the shift i can move that up by 10 centimeters going to spline tangents soft interpolation and then all i've got to do is by eye i can just sort of move this out until i get something like that and that should be perfectly good get another circle drop it into my rectangle make it four millimeters in diameter and then go back into object mode and zero the circle out and once again just by eye i can move it up well in fact i could it's on the 45 millimeter line or the 45 centimeter line so if i do that it should be pretty much exactly where it needs to be once again as i did before spline conversion connect objects and delete and that gives us a circle once again as one object and as i did with the arms i'm just going to drop the spline into while holding down my alt key and extrude and that's fine it's done that we can set the offset to five and we've got our first leg great and it's in the right sort of place i'm just going to move it back in the z to zero and it's in the correct plane then the arms are still a little bit low i can or you know they're, just, they're not massively low we can just get a hold of those and, and move them slightly out of the way and that should be fine 
get a hold of the leg and do the same thing again just just hold that down and move them out so that we've got a pair i mean these are not absolutely set up perfectly at the moment but it's just a little bit of work to get them to where they need to be so it's no problem so this is going to be the left leg and this one the right leg now the legs are just inanimate objects they don't do anything uh, they just they literally just stand there I suppose you could say <laughs> they're not doing anything they're not part of the IK chain that's what I'm saying here but they're still relatively important so we're going to leave them where they are for the minute and the next thing we need to do is think about where we're going to put our first joint for the IK chain now I'm not going to do the IK at this present time I'm just going to get things set up so that we're ready for when we do need to do it I'm going to grab another cylinder orientate that in the plus X there it needs to be four millimeters in diameter and 75 in the height a single height segment is fine again we'll make it 60 for the sake of keeping everything the same I'll move it up I'm going to do this by eye oh well in fact well saying that do I really need to know because I can just do a hundred go into my side view there and then all I need to do is drag this somewhere over here and that will be fine in fact I'll put it on the 25 line for now and then with these legs just move them into position so that they're just sort of within the length of the cylinder there so that's the legs pretty much set up the next joint we need to worry about and I'm going to get another cylinder just hold down the command key and drag and drop another cylinder without selecting everything else and this is going to be my shoulder joint so this one we're going to call hip joint and this one shoulder joint And again, all I need to do here is just move this just about into position there. Just go into my orthogonal view again, see where we are. I'll put that on the 215 line. And then all I need to do is get a hold of both the arms and just eyeball them through with the legs now I've got the sort of arms almost in the correct position still got a little bit of work to do there I can just bring these legs in a little bit more I'll just bring them so they're just inside the line of the arms there And that should be perfectly good and then with the arms if we just go into the end view and have a quick look at the arms there again I can select both of them and just eyeballing this up until they're in the correct place just about there if we have a quick look at what we've got there yeah all looks very good I've got my joints in place and I've got my arms and legs in place next thing I suppose we could do is the feet for the little chap there so let's uh, get a cylinder we can leave it orientated as it is the radius can be so the radius what am I going to use for a radius here if we go radius 20 for now and well, in fact I'll tell you what radius 10 is going to be better for that because I want 20 over yeah radius 10 and then in the height I just need 5 and these need to be set to 5 in the Y let's have a look see where we are if I've got that correct object let's have a look 
Let's have a quick look, see where we are. Right, so I just need to go around. Oh, it needs to be 10, actually, just 10 in the Y. Or is it 7.5? It's 7.5, actually. Yeah, that's perfect. In view one, I was going to have a quick look at where we are there. Right, they're not quite in line with the legs, but that's fine. I can easily eyeball that through. So I just want that sort of in the middle of my leg there, which is going to be minus 3.5 on the, on the X, I think, for now. Let's just get the other one in place. So again, I'm going to, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I, th I think it's probably best to model this first. What I'm going to do then is change the height to a single segment again. Rotation height, um, rotation segments. It, yeah, I mean, 60 again is fine. We'll do that just to give it the detail there. And then what I need to do with this, I've got to make it editable because it needs to be an oval shape. So I'll hit C, go into my top view. Uh, and just have a quick look, see if I can see what I need to see. I can just about see my my foot there. If I go into my scale tool here, and I'll drag this until I get the right sort of shape. Probably about 30 in the Z will be okay, I think, for that. And then I'll drag it forward until it's about there. Let's have a quick look, see if that looks okay. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it could go, I'll tell you what, let's do 40 in there and drag that forward a little bit more. That looks good. Now that looks good. Yeah, that's it's sort of proportional. I quite like that, that's, that's good. Drag it a little bit further forward if needs be. Something like that. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that's gonna work nicely. OK, great. And then all I've got to do again, holding down my command key, just drag a copy out and drop it around there. Go to the orthogonal view and just check to see where we are. 52.5. I think it should be good in the Z. Or is it? Let's have a look. Maybe it's 53. Might just be 53.5. Let's just check this and see if it is. No, it's a little bit over 53 then. Yeah, I mean, 53 is going to be fine, isn't it? That's that's absolutely fine. That'll do nicely. Yeah, that looks good. I mean, it doesn't need to be absolute perfection. As long as it's near enough, that's fine. Because, again, these are just inanimate objects. They're not doing anything. So left, left foot. And this one can be right foot. All looking nice. OK. So to tidy things up a little bit, I'm going to select the feet I'm going to select the legs and I'm just going to group those together I'm just going to call these legs and feet put the feet at the bottom I think probably the easiest way so let's just grab the legs and drop them up the top OK, that's good. So there's everything's sort of orientated in the correct way now. And we've got our, sh our, our hip joint and our shoulder joint. And as I said, they, they're not part of this, so they can th at the moment they can stay separate anyway. In order to make this a little bit more anatomically correct, we need to move the shoulders and the arm. or They need to be just down a little bit because obviously people's hands tend to come sort of level if, well, effectively like that, if we just line these two holes up with the the hip joint there, the hands are pretty much where they would be on a on a human being. So if we then get a hold of our shoulder joint here, I'll just group both the arms into there just temporarily. And I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees minus 90 I'm just going to take the arms out of the shoulder joint now put those back where they were and put the shoulder joint back where it was 
We can move on from here and we can look at the body, the man's body. Right, so let's just get a cube. That's what this is going to be modeled from. And I'm going to make this cube 50 by, well, now for, we'll just say 100 for now. We'll probably do some adjustment on that. And 36 in the depth worked out pretty well. Let's just get this into position or somewhere near where it's going to be in its start position. Again, this can be just done by eye. It's the, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, as long as it's in a sensible position, it's fine. Let's just get this. Yeah, have a quick look, see what we've got. Object. Yeah, I mean, by eye, that's between the legs there. It's just right, right center of the legs and pretty much center of the, the two arms there. And you can see that that's it's pretty much anatomically correct, isn't it? It looks pretty good. It, it it's it's in proportion. We can say, just move it up a little bit there, so that we've got a little bit above the shoulders. That's perfectly good. So from here we can make this cube editable, and we can start doing a bit of manipulation. Now, what I'm going to do first is go into polygon mode there, and I'm just going to say select visible elements on this one grab a hold of this top one here and let's just do a little bit of playing around and see if we can sculpt a neck and a head so if we say we're going to extrude inner and we'll say an offset of well let's just do five and see what we get so it's not enough but we can go probably a little bit more but not too much so let's just go to say seven and that looks pretty good for the amount of offset that we've got front and back. Now, obviously side on, it needs to be a bit different to that. So what we need to do in the X is make this 22 so that we get a square. That should look okay. So let's do an extrude on that. Let's go say, try 10. Yeah, I mean, 10 looks pretty good for the neck. I would say that's enough. Because after all, this is only a mannequin. It's not really, we're not going to be producing a sort of uh, a work of art here um, by Michelangelo or, or the, 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 it's not going to be the Venus de Milo. <laughs> For a start, it's got arms. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're not we're not looking at sort of fine arts here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's continue from there uh, before we get too far into that. <laughs> Um, we're going to do an offset here of say minus, let's go minus two, see what we get there. Perhaps a little bit further, let's go minus three. And then if we say, again, let's just go 10 mil for a start, just to give us a start on that. Sort of give us a jawline there. We can go, I'll tell you what I will do as well. I think what I might do is instead of doing an extrude, do I want to do something different? I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll leave it as an extrude and I'll go a bit further actually. What I'll do if we go sort of 40. So that's given us a head. And in fact, it's pretty good if you think about that. That looks anatomically pretty correct, doesn't it? It actually looks pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. And then moving on from here, I'll drop this into a subdivision surface. And again, I'll hold down my Alt key and drop that into there. And we're starting to get something that looks like a man's body and a head, doesn't it? It's not too bad. Um, go into our options here. And I don't want isosceline editing. I just want it like that. That's fine. Go into edges and UL for loop selection. And let's just tighten that up a little bit so that we get something a little bit more like that. Again, around the shoulders, let's tighten this up so that we're sort of like that. And at the bottom here, we'll do the same thing again, just tighten this up so that it's it's sort of more like a man's body. I mean, you can sculpt this as much as you like if you want to go further than this, but I mean, it's, it's a bit, it looks a bit like the Tin Man from uh, The Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? But <laughs> that's fine, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And what we can also do, it's just, just sculpt things a little bit more. What I'll do is get my, knife tool and just do a loop cut through here. It's at 50%. We can make it 50 dead on to be pedantic about it. That's fine. 
and then all we've got to do is ul again to select that loop and then i'll just i don't want to do it in the y but what i'll do is just bring these out a little bit just to give the head a little bit of roundness there i mean that looks okay it's not it's not fine arts as i say it's 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 as long as it looks okay it's fine just take that perhaps in a little bit yeah that looks okay doesn't it it looks pretty good actually it's going to work isn't it it's going to work that's the main thing and then if we wish to again ul let's go through there and say around the bottom here and we'll just add a little bit more in the z just to give it a bit more depth just a bit i don't want too much i don't want to go overboard with it but that's that's okay yeah that looks okay it doesn't ex look exactly like the original one that i've done but that's that's fine you know it's it's looking good that's looking good so if we call this i'm just going to call this torso as a general sort of way to describe it What I'm going to do next is group the arms. So again, Alt G, arms. Excellent. So I've got my hip joint and I need to think about where I'm going to put all of these things in order to make uh, the IK chain. I'm, again, I'm not going to do it quite yet. I'm going to, going to leave all the sort of technical stuff with IK and dynamics and everything else that we're going to be doing until I've until the very end, until I've built everything basically. But that completes the build for the little man and he's come out pretty satisfactorily and uh, yeah I'm pleased with the result that I've got there. From here the next thing to do is to build a support system or a, a support system support brackets really aren't they just support brackets for the uh, handle and the propeller that's going to drive this thing so that's what we're about next. This is pretty straightforward I just need to get hold of the legs or in fact one of the legs if I just get the left leg I can copy this out go into my top view just bring it forward somewhere there just by eye for, the, for a tick there that'll be okay I'll, I'll get it right in the minute but bring that to there Again, go into the side orthogonal view. Go into point mode and select all of these points that make up the top part of this. And all I'm going to do is just drag them up until they're level with the shoulders. And then we can simply move this to here. Now that's good enough. I mean, by eye, it, it's it's absolutely fine. That that will work because we're going to be leaving some clearance, just a little bit of clearance when we put the handle uh, together. And you can see that it's going to match up okay. I mean, we can still do a we can do a little bit of adjustment if we wish to. Um, just go into our move tool and uh, just do a little bit of adjusting. And that's that's perfectly good. OK, so that's the first of our supports in position there. Now, the first thing I need to do or the next thing I need to do before I go any further. I'm going to just get a hold of this and move it out of there. It's not going to be a leg. It's just going to be I'm going to call this the rear support. Get a hold of it copy it and create the next one I'll drag it just to somewhere around there I'll just move the little man get a hold of every part of him and we'll just move him out of the way so that he's about there we'll also move him back a bit I think because what we need to do is get the supports on the center plane of the 
of the base there. If we just put that there, that should be okay. That should be okay. And then have a little bit of a look at this and we'll just move those down minus five so that they're actually no I won't do that because I need a I need a brace across the bottom so I'll leave them they're perfectly good where they are so I'll leave them there if we just go into our little man again what I can do that's fine in that view just move him so that I can get his arms in the correct position just zoom in a little That we can see what we're doing. Just get him by eye in the correct position. Okay, so the the elements are, are lined up nicely. All we now need is to get. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to get a cube actually, and what I'll do, I'll just drop that down to five in the height. Move it up five let's have a quick look see where we are h maybe 7.5 actually 7.5 that will go there nicely move that between the two of these and then start adjusting so in the z if we make it 20 and then make our size 150 Let's have a quick look there. Make a little bit less than that, make it 130. And then again, just by eye, that will do nicely. So that's our support brackets made for our handle. And everything's looking the way we want it. The next thing we need to do is work on the handle itself and get that made. We'll switch to our side view here and we'll start having a look at this. Now, let's just get a spline and we can adjust the points after we've done this. But what we'll do, we'll put start somewhere sort of over here because I'm going to allow for the propeller and also spacers. So I'm going to come to somewhere just here what I may do actually I'll tell you what I'll do just turn on snapping that makes life a little bit easier I think and we'll go down to grid slate that's grid snap that's fine so that we can get this on the line there that going to will come out to about yeah say about there that should be okay I think I don't want to go too deep with the handle probably somewhere around that much is, is probably going to be fine for the handle and then come through to level with the end of the left hand there and that should be okay I mean we could possibly go a little bit deeper with that we go somewhere probably somewhere there and then this point at the end here we just need to snap that into place so that's given us the handle now we do need to adjust its position so you can see that it's pretty good but it's not 100 percent correct it's good because it's in the center there but we just need to do a little bit of adjustment on a few of the points so if we select these points and just move a little bit closer to it just zoom in a little bit closer to where we are and then again I'm just going to drop this down and I don't need to be absolutely 100% precise about it that should do nicely that's okay the only thing is I've only selected visibles so I need to do both of them let's just get that one go back into our off end view there and just drop this down again Now there's a bit more work that needs to be done because I'm going to put some rounding on the handle. 
because it's not quite there. It doesn't want to be too square. So what we need to do, I've got those two points selected. So I'll hold down the control key and subdivide between those two and then do the same here. And finally, the same between these two points. And then it's just a case of getting a hold of the points that we've added and just bringing them across to where we think they're going to need to go. I'm going to turn the snapping off. Again, I'm not going to be too particular about this. I'm just going to the side view there. I'm not going to be too particular about it. I'm just going to get them by eye to where I think they need to be. Somewhere there. And I also need to bring that one over here, somewhere to there. And I also need one more point between these two points. So again, I'm going to subdivide just to give me that extra point and drop that one down into position somewhere about there. And then all I've got to do is select these points, come up to spline and say add, and then just say round. I don't want 20 points. I think we can 10 will probably be enough. I would think just apply that. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be fine, isn't it? I would think I'll tell you what, before we, before I do that, though, it didn't come out as well as I'd wanted it to, because I think I did both of them at the same time. Let's just do them individually. Let's just do that again. Select. Um, my tools here rounding that's what I need to do select that one that's better that's much better and then same thing again if I select these and hit rounding again yeah that's fine fantastic next I need to get a circle make it four millimeters or we can go 3.5 just to give us that little extra clearance and then all we need to do with this is drop it into a sweep so again hold down the alt key select a sweep and then drop the spline into there under the circle and we've got the handle and that looks really nice now there's one thing i do need to do is orientate this slightly differently because what we've got at the moment it's sweep nerves is in pretty much the wrong place so what I'm going to do I'm just going to take these out of here select the spline and go into axis and just say axis center and I'm going to execute that so at the moment the axis for the spline is now in the middle of it but what I want to do is actually move up in the y-axis 100% and execute that so that now it's in the center of rotation it doesn't really matter about where it is in regard to the rest of the spline but as long as it's in the it's it's set to 100% in the y that's absolutely fine because it's technically in the center of the point of rotation of the the handle and that's exactly where it needs to be and then all we've got to do I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of that sweep and what I'll do is select this and then again hold down my alt key and select sweep and now the sweep is in the correct position drop the circle into there and now if I select the sweep we can tell we know that when we rotate this it's going to rotate properly we can call the sweep handle and that's the next part of our build complete so let's move on to the, the next stage which is to build the propeller and then we'll put a we'll put a nut on the end of the propeller as well and um, on my original model i also put a couple of nuts in here and two on the feet well for the sake of it here i'll leave those two off but i will put one on the end of the propeller and that's what we're going to do next but before i do that I'm just going to create a couple of spaces and I'm going to do that by getting a tube. Orientate it in the plus X there. 
inner radius of four, outer radius, I'm going to use eight. I'll give it 60 rotation segments for the sake of argument. Cap segments is fine. Uh, and its height wants to be about 10. And height segments, just the single height segment. And we're going to transfer that. I'll just use the transfer tool to come up to here, transfer, and I'll transfer it to there. That's perfectly good. And then I can just move it a little closer to the rear support there and then just hold my command key down and drag the second one over to here. And then I can call this one rear spacer and this one front spacer. And that's those two done. Good, now we can think about our propeller. And in order to make this, I can hold my, down my command key and copy the front spacer, move it along till it's just in front of the front spacer there, and we'll just call this prop. And we can do a little bit of work on this before we can carry on. Now the outer radius just needs to be 20. Have a quick look and see what we've got there. Yeah, that should be good for the outer radius, I think. The segments of rotation will leave as they are. The height we can leave as it is, that's fine. Now the height segments, rotation actually, we do need to change the rotation segments. We only need eight, so we've got eight rotation segments. Uh, and that should be good. It's, it's Everything else is okay, I think. And we can then make that editable. And just take a look at what we've got. If I go into polygons, we need to select every other polygon around this edge. So if we select that one, that one, come around the back and select this one and this one, we can then think about sculpting this into a propeller. So let's see what we're going to do. I think I've moved those, don't want to do that. That's it. Now. If I just reselect this one, that's better. Right, so let's see where we go from here. Well, the first thing I think I'm going to do is extrude inner. So I'm going to say I for extrude inner. And I'm going to come in by about one. And I'm going to then use my bevel tool. So if I say MS for bevel, yeah, I think we will extrude probably about five. And if we then go to, let's see if this does any good. Yeah, that, that's good. I'm liking that. That's a good start. That's a good starting point for this. Now from here, what do we need to do next? What we need to do, I'm going to use the, yeah, I'm going to use the uh, matrix extrude. Now if I say MX for matrix extrude. Now I just want one step initially. In fact, yeah, one step. Yeah, I will. I'll use one step. I'll do this one step at a time. So just one step. Now the scaling, I'm just going to make 100 for all of those at the moment. And I'm going to go five for this and I'm going to rotate it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try 10 minus 10 in the Z. Let's just see what happens. Where are we? Let's have a look, see where we are. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's starting to do what I want it to do. That's definitely starting to do what I want it to do. What I might do, though, is just change the the uh, the scale. I think we'll probably use one. Try 150. In the, yeah, that's good. That's good. So it's, it's starting to rotate, and it's also grown slightly. So now what I'm going to do is apply another transform, and that gives me two of them. Now, that's looking very nice. That's going to give me what I want with my blades. Next thing I need to do is just take this back to zero. I'm going to apply a new transform. Let's just take that back. Um, where am I? I'll tell you what I need to do. Just take that back to. No, let's just give me that one. I need that transform. I definitely need that transform. But I need it rotated by the minus 10. That's better. I can then apply another new transform, but this time I can take away the minus 10 because I want that in the same plane as the other two. And I also want it longer. I want it probably, let's try 80 centimeters. 
and zoom out and see what we've got. Yeah, now this is looking nice, looking very nice. Yeah, okay, that's great, that's that's good. I'm liking that very much. So the next thing I need to do is, it's again, it's another new transform, but I don't want 80 centimeters. So I'll do the new transform and then reduce it. So if we come down to five, and we don't want to go 150%, we want to go something like, try 80% in the Y there. Yep, that looks good. Um, looks very nice indeed, actually. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. That's looking very nice, actually. Uh, let's see, let me have a look at this and see if we can make another little bit of a an adjustment to any of that. Can I make that 70? Yes. Let's try, try going a bit lower. Try 50. That's it. Now we're looking very, very nice indeed. Now, if we put this into a uh, subdivision surface, just drop that into there, we've got something that resembles a propeller now. Great. So what we can do just to tidy this up, it needs, if we go into edge mode here, we go UL and we select the front inner edge there and we select this edge along there for the, the outer. I'll just zoom in a little bit so that we can see what we're doing a bit better here. So we've got those two edges there selected. I'm going to come around the back and do the same thing. So I want this edge here. I'm going to just select that one and then where the spacer is, we can just see in there, we want this little edge in there, just in the inner there. And then all we need to do is hold down our full stop key and click and drag, and we can drag those out. And that looks really nice. Just to take this hard edge off, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say KL for knife loop selection, and I'm just gonna come up to here and click to give us that there. I'm going to do one round the back. That's quite nice. And then what I can do on these outer loops, I go UL and I select this outer loop here and the same at the back. That one as well. I can just hold down my full stop key and drag the other way and just soften those a little bit. Don't want to soften them too much, just enough to take the edge off of it. Something like, yeah, there, that should do okay. It's just softened it slightly, that's that's okay. I think we can live with that. Yeah, that looks that does look quite nice. So we've got our propeller now, and that should work well for us. Okay, superb. The final stage of this then is to make a nut that will go on the front of the uh, the handle here and hold the propeller in place. So to do that, it's just another cylinder. And I'm going to transfer that one to, again, just, just transfer it to there. Uh, we'll orientate it differently in the plus X. Its radius can be, go for, let's say 10 and the height just five because initially this is going to be a washer in fact I may even make it smaller than five I'm just going to drag it in place yeah make it I'll make that two actually make it two that's fine uh, height segments one and rotation segments six go into the object and there it is so it's sat there and that's going to be a washer initially as I say so just drag that sort of back into there somewhere straight away we're going to make it editable so hit C and go into polygon mode now what are we going to do next well we're going to select all of these so I'm going to say UL select them all and then I for extrude inner and we'll apply a one one centimeter inner extrude is, is going to be absolutely fine for that and then what we can do is D for extrude, probably go 10, maybe a little bit much. Let's just zoom out and see. Yeah, that's a little bit too high. Let's go seven. That's good for that. Maybe I'll tell you what, I'm going to go five 
because I'm going to do a little bit of work with the bevel tool on this and make it look a bit fancy. So that's good for that. And then all I need to do again is go I for extrude and we'll go another one. That would be fine. And then I'm going to use the bevel tool. So MS. Uh, let's have a look how many subdivisions we're going to need here. Extrusion, we've got subdivision zero. We want about five subdivisions. Let's just well, let's just hit it and see what happens. Uh, OK, it's already looking pretty darn good. That's that's actually looking very, very nice. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I for extrude in there again. And I'm going to say do 0.5 and then D for extrude. And I'm going to give it a minus of minus one just to go in into the top there. And that's great. Now, that's our basic shape ready to go. So what we need to do now is throw this into a subdivision service. So I'll hold down my Alt key and do that. And we, you can see that we're already on the way to it, but we're not quite there. So let's just zoom in and take a look at what we've got. Now, in order to make this work, first thing we need to do is go into edge mode, UL for loop select and select this and this. And then we're going to hold down the uh, full stop and make that into a circle so that it's becoming like a washer. Next thing to do is go back to polygon mode. UL is already selected, so I can grab a hold of that and I can drag this out. And now you can see that we've got something resembling a, a nut on top of a washer. And what we need to do just to make things slightly better, the washer's a little bit smaller at the moment. So I'm going to go UB and select well, in fact, yeah, that will be it'll still be fine like this. Actually, if I select that in the polygon mode, it will still be fine. I was going to go UB and select in the, the edge mode, but that will still work. And then all I need to do, I don't need to move it in the in the uh, X axis this time. So I can lock that and unlock the other two and then just make that bigger. OK, now you're starting to see a couple of artifacts here and there creeping in and we can get rid of those quite easily. If we just go KL and we select our edge mode again, all I've got to do is click somewhere about in the just sort of the midpoint between, say, where the where the nut is and where the edge of the washer is. If you just click there, it will straighten that out and get rid of those artifacts. So that looks really nice. And then with that still selected, I, I can just go back to UL. If I select, say, this here, if I wish to, I can tighten that just a little bit just to make that a, a slightly better shape. And I could do the same at the top if I wanted to, but I quite like that the way it is. It's soft and I quite I do quite like that. That looks quite nice, actually. The only other thing you can do if you wish to is grab a hold of uh, a bevel deformer. If you just grab one of those from here uh, and drop that into the subdivision service and just put it under the cylinder. Now, you've got a lot of artifacts in there, but you need to do some work with the bevel deformer to, to correct that. The offset doesn't want to be as much as that. It wants to be about 0.2, just so that you get a bit of bevel and it just gives it this slightly better edge. And then in the subdivision, if you make that, say, three, it's perhaps a bit too much. <laughs> Try, in fact, if it's too much, what we can do is actually change the offset. Try that to 0.05. If that, and see if that makes a difference. It might not. Uh, if it doesn't, let's come back and try two. OK, so we can just do two subdivisions and let's just take that back to where we had it before, which is point two. OK, and now we're actually getting something that's pretty nice. I mean, I think we can leave it like that. If you go three subdivisions, it obviously causes the, the thing to go a bit crazy because of the size of the object. But that's pretty good. I mean, that's quite nice if you look at it. What we could also do I mean, if you wish to, you can you can create selections, obviously certain edge selections, and you can apply the bevel deformer to just the selection that you've got uh, and, and just experiment with that and see what you can come up with. But I think for our purposes here, this we're going to be viewing it from quite a way away anyway. And I think that looks really nice. It, it actually finishes it off quite nicely. And I think we've got a good result there. So I'm not going to go any further with that. It's just to sort of give you a few hints and tips and ideas for things to do. But uh, you know, as it stands, we've essentially created everything we need to make this thing actually work now. So that's pretty much the modeling side of it all done and dusted. Good. So before we go any further, what we need to do is just do a little bit more naming. So this is nut. 
and I've also got down here cube now that is if we just select object tool yeah okay it's the bottom bottom bracket we'll call that for our supports there okay that's good I don't think there's anything else that needs to be named no nothing else that needs to be named so what I'll do I'll just drag this down here and we'll start to, we'll start to group a few things together now the handle we need to group a few things into there so for a start what we're going to put in there as well as the other two objects in there we'll put these in there we'll also put the nuts in there so that's the handle now for our man what I'll do I've got the weather vane there I'll move that up to the top okay I'll leave the prop where it is the handle is fine uh, right the brackets what I'll do here is put these as prop support so I'll just group those together call those prop support assembly <laughs> might as well call it that and then the rest of it is the man so we'll just move the legs and feet beneath this select all of the man there and I will group that together and call it man that's fine uh, and that's 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 all good so yeah everything is done there and everything is looking very good in terms of its grouping together now before we go any further let's just do a couple more checks to make sure everything's okay so we've got weather vane which is that part of it that's fine this subdivision surface we should rename that prop actually because that is the propeller and now let's just take that just take that away and call that polygon again that's fine so that's the prop yet the handle the support assembly and the man that's all good everything in there is absolutely fine so that's that little bit of it done and we can now start to think in terms of getting the IK rigged for the man and then the props dynamics done and also another connector here for dynamics so that the uh, the whole thing can move when the wind blows it and we'll also get a wind object in there to make this happen so that's going to be the next part of all of this actually one more thing I will do is get a hold of all of these and group them and I will call those P and M assembly P and M for proper man and they can just drop in there and then we can move the base support back up to the top so everything is now grouped as it needs to be that's great the first thing I need to do to get this thing animated is to come down here into my little man and we, what we're going to do actually is rig him with an IK setup I'm just going to get this arm group here now if I go into my top view and just zoom out a little bit so that we can see everything I need to move this so that it's positioned in the center of the handle or thereabouts so what we need to do is get a hold of the axis tool and just pull this forward and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on here so that I can see where I am and just move that again by eye it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but as long as it's there that should do fine so that's in the center of there I can then go back to my 3D view and we can think about setting up the IK hierarchy. Now the hip joint is going to be the root of the IK. That's the that's so that's the base of the IK. So we'll group the torso into the hips and also the shoulders at the same level as the torso. Moving on from here, all we need to do is group the arms into the shoulder joint, and that's the setup for our hierarchy. And now we can simply give the hip joint, if we come down to rigging, the IK tag. And to make this work, all we need to do is grab a hold of the arm group here and put them in the end. And straight away, you can see that the handle line, this green line, has appeared. So that means it's rigged correctly. And if we want to, we can go into the display here and we can just uncheck the box and we can make that handle line disappear. But we'll leave it there. Good. So the next thing from here, go back to the tag 
tab there. We just need a goal, we need an end goal. So we can just say add goal and straight away we've got an arms goal and if we click on this and start to move it the man starts to react accordingly which is great. Now in order to get this to work what we need to do is go into our side view and as we did with the top view we just we need to bring this arm goal to the center of the handle just to bring the man down and bring his arms into the correct position so it needs to be about say there that should look good let's have a look and see what that looks like in 3d just turn this around and zoom in a little bit and see what we've got yeah not far off we can probably just move it down a tad more move it down to say they there that that will be fine i think that that'll work yeah that will be good for us yes i'm liking that now in order to make this thing move if we take our arms goal and place it in the handle set up here and we just place it under the front spacer and then we should be able to get hold of our handle and if we move this everything should hopefully work if i just come out of my let's just bring that back to where it was just come back out of there and yep everything is going to work isn't it so we just turn this for a better angle to see what we've got so if we move this yep we're getting a we're, it's going to work fine the only thing i will do is get a hold of the man and i'm just going to shunt him forward a little bit that to just to about there so i think that'll give us a more natural sort of motion when we turn the handle let's just give that another go it's still a little bit all right let's just move him forward from there just so that he's just more like that that's what i'm looking for so that he's not sort of overstretched let's see what this looks like yes now that looks good that looks really good fabulous right we'll go with that so we'll set this back to zero yep that's perfectly good so that's our little man's IK rig sorted out. So we can move on from here and set up the dynamics. The first thing I'm going to do is come into simulate dynamics and get a connector. And I'll hold down my command key and drag this out to create another one. Now the first connector I'm going to rename and I'm going to call it base connector. And we'll call this one while we're doing that prop connector just get rid of the one at the end I've got my base connector now for a start it needs to be minus 90 in the rotation P in the pitch so that sorts that out and then we'll just move it up slightly so that we can see all of it there and all we need to do to set this up it doesn't need to be changed in the type it is a hinge we just need to grab a hold of the arrow there and select the base and that's as much as we need to do everything else in there can remain the same now the prop connector what we need to do here first is move it into position so i'm going to get go up to tools transfer and just click on the nut there just to transfer it into the correct place and in the in, in the rotation it can be minus 90 so in the rotation h the minus 90 and that sets that into the correct position and the correct rotation. The next thing we need to do in order to get anything to work is give both our base and our prop dynamics tags. So we'll select the base, go into tags, simulation, rigid body. And let's have a look at the dynamics. Now in here, the dynamics tag tab there, we don't need to change anything that can remain as it is. In the collision, in the inherit tag, we need to select compound collision shape and all because I want the vein I want the strut and I want the base to be treated as a single object and that's great that's all good the shape we can change to a convex hull and that's as much as we need to do in there the next port of call for us is to go into the force tab scroll down to the bottom and, and in the aerodynamics here just give it 300% lift and leave it at that and that's completely good for 
our first dynamics tag there. I'm going to copy this one by command dragging it down onto the prop. And as we're already in the forces, we can we can leave that exactly the same. 300% lift, leave it the same. Again, dynamics, don't worry about those. Just go into collision here in the inherit tag, select none and off. Convex hull is fine and everything else can stay the same. And that's the two dynamics tags set up as they need to be. Let's just check these are working OK. If we run the timeline, nothing should happen. But the propeller starts to fall. Now, that's not what we want. We don't want that propeller falling. Now, why is that? Why is that propeller decided to fall? Let's just check the prop connector. Right. The reason it's fallen, of course, is because I skipped a stage. Ha <laughs> ha. I wonder if you saw my deliberate mistake. Right. So the prop connector needs to be set up. So grab our arrow. And for a start, we want base as our object A. I mean, once again, we're leaving it as a hinge. It doesn't have to be changed. And in our object B, we want the prop. And now they're set up. Right, let's try this again and see if it works. And this time it does. Nothing happens. The prop stays where it is because it's rooted to the spot by the hinge. And that's exactly what should happen. Great, fantastic. Let's move on from here. Go back up to the simulate menu here come down to forces and we'll bring in a wind object because that's the key thing to making everything animate. We'll move this into a better position. So just drag it along the X. Oops, still on that. Drag the wind along the X. That's better. And we'll just move it back a little bit in the Z. And then to, to, in order to get this into the, the sort of correct direction, I'm just going to give it a direction of minus 110. This is just for starting position there just so that we can see what's going on. And in the object here, we just need to change the mode from acceleration. If we leave that as it is, nothing happens. No good to us whatsoever. So we'll change it to aerodynamics wind. That's what we need it to be. And in the wind speed, just as an initial starting point, we'll just give that 20 centimeters of wind speed. So if we try this now, we'll see what happens and, 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 and see if we get any results. And straight away, we certainly do. You can see that the the uh, the base and its associated objects are moving as we'd expect them to. And also the propeller is spinning and it's also moved with the base object. Well, that's because, of course, nothing else is connected to either of these. We've got the base and the supports and everything else is, is one object and the PM assembly, which of course is our man and the supports and the handle and everything else, is completely separate. So that's not going to be turned by the the base object here yet. And the propeller is is not connected to them either. There's no there's just no relationship between any of them. That's what we've got to set up next. And the way we do that is to use Expresso. So that's our next port of call. I'll just reset my timeline to zero. And then grab a hold of a, a null object and rename it Expresso. Give it an Expresso tag, so programming Expresso, and we're ready to start work. First thing I'm going to do is drag in my base object and come down to coordinates, rotation, rotation H. And I'm going to pass that rotation to the PNM assembly. So again, I'll just connect that to there. Rotation, rotation, H. And that's set up for us. Let's see what happens when we run the timeline now. So we're getting something a little bit different. The propeller's not quite in the right position. And you can see why this is happening. If you notice that the supports for the propeller and the handle, they're actually sliding towards the front edge of the base there. And the same applies to the man. He isn't rooted to the spot either. And that's something that we need to sort out but it's, it's going in the right direction. Right, so what can we do to perhaps tidy this up a little bit before we do any more Expresso? Well, let's take a look at the PNM assembly. And if we notice the coordinates are nowhere near the center of the base here, which is at the center of the world as it happens, but they're nowhere near the center of the base. Well, we can easily fix this. We just need to be in axis mode and it, we actually already are, so that's great. What we can do is simply zero these out. So let's take that back to zero there and zero it out there. So that's 
brought those into line. Now let's have a look at the prop supports. Similar story here and let's zero these out as well. Take these to the centre of the, the base there. And finally what about our man? Same again. So let's centre these up as well and see if we can get everything rotating around a common centre and see if that helps. Right so let's just quickly run the timeline again and see if we get any difference. Ah now that's a bit different isn't it? That's a lot different. So putting things around a common centre has made things a lot tighter. I don't think it's completely there yet and in fact I know it probably isn't having done this before but it's pretty good. Yeah I mean it's looking much better isn't it? So let's just see where we go from here. Let's do a little bit more espresso and what the, the next thing to do is to connect the prop to the handle. So let's go into the espresso editor again, drag in our prop and this time we'll say rotation in our coordinates rotation P and we'll pass that to the handle. So come down to coordinates, rotation P. And let's see what happens with this. Right, so now we've got our little man whizzing away and he's turning the handle for us and everything is moving as we'd like it to be. But let's just have a quick look, see if there's any glitches in here. Yes, there is. It's only very subtle. But now we've got the dynamics and the uh, the IK rig playing together. There's a slight a slight glitch in it, and that's always going to be the case because the fact is that dynamics and IK they don't always play well together because the, it's because of the way they're calculated. They're not calculated in the same way as as the espresso um, and st and stuff like that. If you I mean if you select the tag here. Don't be tempted to play around with the priority. Just leave that as it, as it is. You've also got another one of those priorities in the basic uh, tab here on the on the IK. Just leave them as they are. Don't play around with those. It won't make any difference. I've tried it every which way you can imagine. I've tried playing around with this number here. It just doesn't make any difference. They don't really play well together. In fact, at one stage, I actually made the propeller, the nut and the handle a single object as a compound shape within the dynamics tag to see if I could make them turn the uh, or, or make the man move. And the, the arms of the man, they always played catch up with the handle. It was clunky. I mean, this runs really smoothly. It didn't run smoothly at all. It was a complete mess. So don't even bother going there. This the, the way I've got this set up and the way that I'm developing this, this does seem to be the definitive way to actually make this work. But anyway, we've got it a little bit further. So we can get back to doing a little bit more espresso. And the next thing we're going to do is work with the wind object here. The first thing I'm going to do is change the direction of the wind. I'm going to make that back to zero in the rotation there. I'm also going to group this into a null object. So I'm just going to say Alt G and then change the name of this to wind direction. OK, that's great. Open up the Espresso editor again. I'm going to drag both of these objects in. They're going to be last in the chain, so I'll put them over here. And then I'm going to grab a time node, remove the time port and replace it with a frame port. And then while I think about it, I'm going to come down to my timeline here and make it 600 for the maximum frames there because I want this to run over 600 frames, this piece of animation. The next thing to do, I need, I do need two range mappers, but for the moment I'm just going to get one. Uh, you'll see why a little bit later. So I'm just going to grab that one there, plumb in the timeline or the, or the frame from the, from the time node there. And then finally, I'm just going to grab in a degree node because as you know, I prefer to work with degrees than radians. So I'm just going to grab that in there. And in the function, I don't need it set up as radians to degrees. I need it set up as degrees to radians. 
and then finally I'll plumb it into the coordinates rotation h of the wind direction there. Good so that's the first bit of that setup. So let's come into this range mapper and start developing this and getting it to where we want it to be. The input lower can stay at zero and upper at 600 because as I say we're using the timeline we're going to be using 0 to 600 frames. The output lower will set to well in fact I'll leave it at zero and I'll put the upper at minus 180 and we'll see what this does for us. And then in here what we're going to do with the spline is just it's going to be a bit random but we'll just put some points in there I mean you can art direct this to your heart's content but for the sake of oops, what we're doing here I don't want to do that for the sake of what we're doing here we can just start putting some points in and just get things moving around so let's just put one in there another couple select both of those and just drag them down to somewhere around there perhaps move that one back a little bit a couple more put these at the top bring in another one there and just put it somewhere about there and another one somewhere there and I'll put another couple near the bottom there one just here Oh, in fact I'll just move that over a little bit and one say there and we'll put that at 0.5 on the Y and I think that'll be a good setup for a test for this now let's have a look see where we are see if we've got anything moving around so just close that down and give this a quick run yeah and it is it's starting to make the the thing move for us it's all uh, you can now you can see a problem there and that's what I wanted to show you we'll just run that again and you'll see the problem keep an eye on what happens with the propeller you'll see that it goes off it's when it moves fast when the base moves fast there you go look the propellers not quite there but wait in a minute in the minute you'll see it here just there you see the propellers not quite in unison with the shaft of the handle is it it's just not quite there now that's a funny thing and it's possible that it could be something to do with the wind perhaps the direction because I've played around with this and I found that I could sort it out by changing the direction of the wind but another thing you can try first in order to help things a little bit is coming to the cache here on the base object and for a start we can bake this object now let's that should lock the man and everything else and the handle and, and, the, and the actual supports in place on the base at the very least they should be completely in unison with each other and they are you can see there's no slippage there now the, the, the propeller didn't slip that time did it it stayed where we'd expect it to be so it seems to me that this may work quite well that doesn't seem to be slipping that propeller this time no it's in place it's not slipping at all so that has improved things we'll just double check just do it again just to make sure I'm pretty sure it is moving there's no slippage on that propeller at all it does at least it doesn't appear to be now it's going to snap back in a minute and that yeah there's no there's no slippage there is there it's all pretty good now so that's made quite an improvement to it so you've got to bear this stuff in mind when you're actually making something like this if you do get slippage you might need to be working with the baking and and stuff like this and make sure you've got everything rotating around a common center these are really important things and make sure you position your connectors in the correct place as well so all of those things added up together do help to make this work okay it's they're, they're just sort of important stages that you need to know and that you've got to do now of course if you wanted to do motion blur on this you will have to bake the prop as well so let's just bake that in fact before we do it I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to unbake this because we've still got a little bit more to do in the espresso and now we've got that sorted out let's just do that let's get the espresso open now I said I wanted to do another range mapper all I'm going to do is copy this one I'm going to plumb that into the frame or plumb the frame into the range mapper and in the wind I'm just going to plumb this into here and I'm going to come down into the object properties and say wind speed in the range mapper 
scroll down a bit and I'm going to say 10 to 30 for the wind speed. And then I'm just going to play around in here and just move a few things just to make a bit of a, a subtle difference in the way that this operates. Just bring those down to the bottom there. Bring these up a little little bit to there. It's just just minor changes and that'll be fine. Just leave it like that. That will be perfectly good. We'll just just move that one down a little bit just to just to make a little bit of a subtle difference. That's all. Right. Let's see what we get now. See the propeller did jerk then it, it actually moved before they started to go. It's OK when the thing's moving slow. You don't really notice it. But there you do. That's the thing is that that's when you notice that there's a problem. OK, so let's do the same as we did before. Let's go into the base, uh, the rigid body tag of the base, and we'll bake the object. OK, let's play from the beginning again. Just to make sure that we're still OK, because we don't want any sort of mishaps at this stage. Yeah, looking good. So the espresso is all doing its job properly and everything else is doing its job properly. I think we're OK. So let's go back to the beginning, bake this one out. And let's run it again. Yeah, and it all seems to be working fine, doesn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and that's working fine now. It's working perfectly well. Great. That looks fantastic, actually. I mean, the dynamic properties of that are pretty much identical to the device that my neighbor had all those years ago. I mean, it, it really is. It's working beautifully. I'm really, really liking that now. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, essentially, that is the complete project. But uh, I just want to go into the top view here just to make sure that everything is exactly as it needs to be. I'm just getting a bit paranoid about it now, but I just want to make a double check here just to make sure that everything really is working the way it needs to be and that I haven't missed anything. And yes, you can see that it is. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. And there you have it. That's how you go about making a mechanical weather vane using Expresso Dynamics and an IK rig. <laughs> and that just about completes this tutorial. So it's been a bit of a marathon, but I hope you've enjoyed doing this one as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, there have been a few frustrations along the way to getting this one to work. I can assure you of that. Uh, <laughs> a few hours went into this one because of all the the way the dynamics and everything else needs to sync up. And it, it did. There was a lot of head scratching, actually, at, at times in order to get this to work. But uh, I got there in the end. And that's the main thing. So if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do. Please subscribe. And of course, please tell your friends about me by sharing. That would be great because all those good things help to keep the channel going in the right direction. But anyway, for now, that about completes this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.